All right, YouTube. I am finally able to finally get to ELDs from the book. So the way I'm going to do it to try to make it as factual as possible is I'm going to read it from the book verbatim and um, hope that I can give insight with facts from the book. So I'm sorry, y'all. I love pretzels. I'm just kind of tearing out some pretzels. So let me try to get a good setup. So this first chapter is going to be from page one to page 19. And let's get started. Okay. Love them or hate them. The hours of service rules have been a fact of life for commercial truck and bus drivers since the 1930s. Though the rules have changed over the years, the goal had always been the same. To keep our nation's highways safe by keeping tired drivers off the road. While it would be nice to have a simple common sense rule for all drivers that say, stay off the road when you're tired. The reality is that you, the commercial truck or bus driver, bear a special responsibility due to the size of your vehicle and or the value of your cargo. A single crash can be devastating for all involved. You, your employer, your customers or passengers, your family and the families of others who may not be returning home safely. Our society has long recognized that fatigue plays a major role in vehicle accidents, even if there is disagreement about how big that role is. Recent government estimates says that fatigue contributes to between 2% and 13% of commercial vehicle accidents. That's why the U.S. Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administrator, FMCSA, and the state transportation agencies have been charged with setting and enforcing minimum standards for rest and limits on the number of hours you can work and drive. The penalties for violating those rules, not to mention the deadly consequences, can be severe. So it's critical that you, you both know and follow the rules, no matter how complex they may be. And they are complex. Year after year, the hours of service rules are consistently among the most violated regulations in the industry. And they consistently generate more questions, myths, and rumors than almost any other set of rules. With the FMCSA's compliance, safety, uh, accountability, CSA enforcement program, even the smallest of a violation can affect your safety record. So full compliance is more important than ever. That's where this HOS handbook can help. It was designed to explain the complex federal hours of service rules in plain English for both truck and bus drivers from the split sleeper provision to logs to exceptions. It can help drivers like you focus more on driving and less on figuring out what the rules mean. All right, so let me try to set y'all up a little more. I hope y'all hearing me. So I'm trying to do this while I got time because I'm waiting for them to come and fix my trailer. So let's continue. Y'all like my prom hat? This my little safety hat I got for being safe. So I would want to probably try to you know cock it to the side so man bumper just take it off all right so fit for duty keep in mind that the rules themselves do not prevent fatigue driving you do a driver who is complying with the rules can still be fatigued due to long hours spent working or driving and or failing to get enough sleep in fact fatigue can sneak up on you when you least expect it your duty is to prevent fatigue driving by taking responsibility for being fit for duty and managing your sleep and rest in such a way that you are safe to drive. Accomplishing that goal may also depend on managing others' expectations of you. Shippers, dispatchers, and others may pressure you to make deliveries on time even if it means driving while fatigued or in violation of the limits. Don't give in to pressure. When necessary, use the hours of service limits to your advantage by pointing out that sometimes you are simply not allowed to drive anymore. Just one crash can erase your safety record 
as well as any extra profit or goodwill that will that you may have gained by operating unsafely okay so we're on page three does this handbook apply to you so this handbook is based on federal hours of service rules found in 49 CFR Part 395 of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations. If you drive a commercial motor vehicle, CMV, then you will likely have to follow some or many of the rules described in this handbook. A commercial motor vehicle is any vehicle used on the public road in interstate commerce where the vehicle or combination of vehicles, where number one weighs or is rated at 10,001 pounds 4,536 kilograms or more two is used to haul hazardous material in a quantity that is required requires a placard three is designed or used to transport 16 or more passengers including the driver or is designed or used to transport nine or more passenger including the driver for direct compensation refer to chapter two for more details but that's i'm gonna do each chap each chapter gonna have its own video so i'm gonna break it up because obviously this is a long book so i know it might be kind of boring me reading verbatim but i can't remember all this stuff to sit here and make a video to be talking straight off the top of my head so in order for me to give you guys fact i truly rather read it to you so if anybody got any questions I'm pretty much giving you an audible of reading this on a YouTube video. Okay, note, because this handbook primarily addresses the federal hours of service rules, it does not contain details on state laws or regulations for hours of service, although they are often the same. See page 33 for more details. Okay guys, we're getting there on page four. Okay, the bus, the bus and truck icons. This handbook is for drivers of both trucks, property carrying vehicles, and buses, passenger carrying vehicle. The following icons are used to point out sections that apply to one or the other or both. All right, so let me see if I can get y'all to see this. All right, so you got the icon. The first one is like a box truck or I guess a, a probably what I'm driving. So... Let me see. Drivers, drivers of truck and I can't read that backwards. That's kind of backwards. Well, y'all can see it, right? Okay. So the first icon, drivers of trucks and other property current vehicles. That's who it applies to. Drivers of buses, vans, limos, motor coaches, and other passenger current vehicles and both types of vehicles. So those icons I showed you, these rules apply to those type of commercial vehicles. Chapters or sections not labeled with an icon generally apply to all the types of CMV drivers, except in cases of chapter three applies to drivers of property current vehicles only. Chapter four applies to drivers of passenger current vehicles only. So those are going to be future coming videos. All right, so we on chapter five. All right, so this is what chapter not chapter five but page five looks like i don't know can y'all see it okay so let me read from it okay driving limit okay i'm gonna go down because you know how you got your um you got your 14 hour clock you got your 11 hour drive time then you got your 70 hour clock so all this breaks down the rest breaks all of that so the first one is driving limit, which is 11 hours. And that's rule 395.3, page 39. Then you have off-duty time. Off-duty time is 10 consecutive hours, either off-duty or in a sleeper berth. So if you put yourself on off-duty or sleeper berth, they both count as off-duty time, as long as you, you keep it off duty or in sleep a bird for 10 consecutive hours to restart your um your clock again then you have rest breaks stop driving if eight consecutive hours has passed since the end of your last rest break of at least 30 consecutive minutes does not apply to short haul short haul is a hundred 
to 150 air miles drivers so obviously you know if you drive 100 to 150 miles at the most that only takes like 100 miles is really like it's close to two hours a two hour drive 150 might be three hours so you're not going to use your whole eight hours to um to where you need to pull over for your 30 minute rest break so with the rest breaks long as you pull over within those eight hours then you're in compliance to where you'll get your time back because if you don't pull over within your eight hours that you started driving you won't get back the rest of your time that's included with the 11 hour clock because you have 11 hours total to drive for the day so a lot of times our Qualcomm's or whatever ELD device you have will start you off with eight hours to start with so say you got a load that requires more than eight hours or you might just want to drive more it's really up to the driver what they want to do or can do as far as driving limit but I always if I have to drive more than eight hours depending on the trip so within usually like I'll drive four to five hours and then I'll pull over and do my 30 minute rest break but it's up to you you can drive the full eight hours and pull over and do your 30 minute rest break the point of the rest break as long as you do 30 minutes within your eight hours you'll get the rest of I think it's like three hours you get back to complete your full 11 hours of drive day so I hope I explained that when you talk about you know some you know just straight to the point facts and stuff sometimes it can sound confusing but once you get in the habit of your routine it, it's really not as confusing as it sound or look so as long as you do your 30 minute break within eight hours it don't matter how long you do it but I really suggest doing it like at least driving uh, four to five hours so you don't got to stop twice to get all your time back because say you got eight hours and you stop maybe only after an hour or two of driving you're not going to get all your hours back so you would probably have to stop again to get the rest of your time back to get all your 11 hours if you decide to drive the rest of your 11 hours for that day so i hope i explained that all right so extension of driving window two hour extension allowed number one two times week for non-cdl's driver within 150 mile air radius or two one times week for other short hauls now some of this stuff i'm learning too so we learning this together to be honest with you now i know the basic stuff like the 30 minute break 10 hour 34 hour reset i know all that stuff but all this extra stuff i'm sure that this book is going to cover i'm learning with you guys too now i don't know what the extension of driving window is and if you senior drivers know y'all tell me so um and then the next one is extension of driving time two hour extension allowed for adverse driving conditions does not extend driving window so two hour extension allowed for adverse driving condition does not extend driving window so i'm guessing if you have a problem um and you got to drive over the time then it's saying it doesn't extend the window but like i said if your safety is in jeopardy you're not going to sit here and let yourself get killed or towed away or you know be in crazy harm's way because you're trying to worry about a clock your safety is number one priority okay the next one is weekly on duty limits no driving after 60 hours in a in seven days or 70 hours in eight days if company operates seven days a week so what that's saying is um after 70 hours after you worked your 70 hours what it is is if you want to continue to run without doing your 34 hour reset you'll then start on the eighth day start to run on recaps and recaps is um what you did that week so say i started monday next tuesday i'm gonna get back what i did from monday on to to um tuesday so say monday i uh only did five hours when tuesday come that's that's when i'm gonna get back on tuesday is five hours and then say you know the last tuesday i did eight hours so wednesday next wednesday i'm gonna get back eight hours so recaps is pretty much what you did the week before and you get those back after you completed your 70 hours like you ran out of all your 70 hours all right 
to reset weekly limit at least 34 consecutive hours of off duty or in the sleep of birth so say you don't feel like running on recaps or you just did some really crappy recap hours and there's no way you're going to profit running those hours because your hours was just terribly short you know you can just sit your truck in the sleep of birth or on the off duty but i recommend putting it on off duty because it, it don't really looks believable that you was in a sleep of birth for a day and a half which not to say that is impossible, but a lot of times if you're going to do a 34 hour reset, it is recommended that you put yourself on off duty because off duty stands for you wasn't in your, your sleeper and you might not even been in the truck. So that's more believable. You want to make your logs believable. So in order to reset, to get all your 70 hours back, you know, all your four o'clock back, you know, you park your truck sit your truck for 34 consecutive hours to get your time back so that's pretty much 24 hours plus 10 hours so a lot of times it's really cool to um to shut down like early in the morning so um you know you probably can start off either that day still like still have day to start off like try to shut your, yourself down in a pretty decent time so when your 34 hour clock does come around you starting your day off during the day so hopefully you're starting off on a weekday so you can catch the dispatcher that that's your dispatcher you can you know get good loads all right so now we are on page six let's go to page six let me show y'all this some of this stuff is real technical terms guys so bear with me because like i said we are learning this together all right now you got split sleeper birth option can split 10 hour break into two separate breaks at least eight consecutive hours in the sleep of birth plus at least two hours off duty and or in the sleep of birth so say say you drove right and out of your 11 hours you might only drove five which will leave you with six hours so if you've been in sleep of birth for eight hours after eight hours you get back what you didn't use the day before and then if you drive you know the remaining two hours then then your clock will reset itself i've done that many times to where i might didn't have time or didn't shut down in time enough so instead of waiting the four or ten hours to reset and get my um you know reset my clock i would just shut down for eight hours to get back the time i didn't use the day before so that's what a split sleeper berth is. Okay, short haul exception, 100 mile airtime. No log or 30 minute breaks required if you stay within 100 air miles or base. Return to base at the end of each day. Go off duty within 12 consecutive hours. No more than 11 hours driving after 10 hours off. 60 70 hour weekly limit keep a daily time record so obviously if you're doing short haul your logs as far as eld should be really easy for you because you don't really need much time to complete your your run like 100 miles is nothing compared to if you had to run like a 1100 miles or you had to run 600 miles so it should be a lot easy to maintain and um you know keep up with your logs if you're doing short hauls okay so short haul exception 150 mile air miles non-cdl non-cdl vehicles only no log or 30 minute uh, rest breaks required if you stay within 150 air mile radius return to base at the end of each day no more than 11 hours driving after 10 hours off 14 hour limit on five of seven days 16 hour limit on two of seven days 60 70 hour weekly limit keep a daily time record paper logs must include graph grid total miles vehicle number carrier name and address signature starting time total hours for each duty station status location for each change in duty status co-driver's name and shipping documents no number or name of shipper commodity uh the next video i, I have a paper log i'm gonna show y'all 
the, the paper log as well um this video is going to be quite long so i might have to kind of break these videos up so they're not super long because obviously i still got a few more pages to go but i might just probably read two more pages and then make a part two okay so now the elds electronic logs if using an electronic logging device eld you must carry an eld user manual instruction sheet describing how to transfer data and what to do if the eld malfunctions and enough enough blank paper logs to last at least eight days so you never want to get caught double logging but you're not going to be double logging but you do want to have a backup paper log in case your electronic log goes down because no matter if your electronic log goes down you still are responsible for keeping track of your log so if your electronic log does go down that's where you pull out a paper log and you log yourself so that you're still legally able to operate your commercial vehicle now the instructions they're talking about uh, let me get it for you now the instructions they're talking about usually prom they keep when they give you your permit book they'll uh, actually put the instructions inside of it so if you say you get pulled over and he's requesting to um, view your, your electronic log most of the time these DOT guys I mean I'm sure now since it's becoming a mandate they probably going to school and getting trained on it but now some of them probably don't know how to work it so it's your job to pass the sheet from out your permit book that's obviously going to be in, in reaching distance or you know most likely a driver's door you're going to pull it out and you know for prime they put it in you know it's in the front of the book in this little pocket so um there's a sheet that looks like this and this sheet pretty much is instructions like step to step on how to work that ELD device and you gotta have this like this is I mean it can be optional if you want to take a chance but legally you are supposed to have this so if you get pulled over you can hand that DOT man that you know so he can check your logs because if not he pro you probably can get in trouble for not having that on, on deck so if using an automatic onboard recording device you must carry instructions for using the device and enough blank paper logs to last the current trip. If using logging software on a device that is not an ELD or a AOBRD, your log must include the same information as required on a paper log and you must be able to print standard logs on demand. I've never had to do that so I don't know about that. So I'm going to read um, I'm probably going to, I'm not going to read the full to the 19th chapter because this is going longer than I really wanted to. So, um, I'm going to go all the way up to, uh, except exceptions. So driving time, 10 hours off duty time, eight consecutive hours driving window, no driving after 15 hours on duty hours, but but other work can continue after that. Extension of driving time. Two hour extension allowed for adverse driving conditions. So, like I, like I said before, say you're unsafe or just anything, like you, you can't find safe parking because your truck might get towed. You have, from what this book is saying, you see where it says extension of driving time? Two hours two hour extension allowed for adverse driving conditions so the book is saying it up to two hours you got up to two hours to get yourself somewhere safely you know after you you know you go past your time weekly on duty limits no driving after 60 hours and seven and seven days or 70 hours and eight days if company operates within seven days split sleeper option can split eight hour break into separate breaks and sleeper berth the shortest being no less than two hours log exception 100 air miles no law required if you stay within 100 miles of the base return to base at the end of the day go off duty within 12 consecutive hours no more than 10 hours driving after eight hours off 
60, 70 hour weekly limit. Keep a daily time record. Paper logs. I think we read this already, so let me go to the next page. Some of this stuff is kind of repeating itself, I guess, to kind of get it in your noggin. So, I think we read that too. So, are you exempt from hours of service? The following drivers are exempt from either all of the federal motor carrier safety regulations, including the, the HOS rules or the hours of service rules in particular. Refer to the regulations to see if you can claim an exemption listed below. So, let me show y'all. I'm hoping that y'all can see. I need better lighting. I need like a classroom setting. All right, so declared emergencies. Provide an emergency relief during a government declared emergency. You're exempt. Removing disabled vehicles. A police agency has requested tow trucks for removing wrecked or disabled vehicles. They're exempt. School bus operation. Transport and pre pre-primary, primary, or secondary school students and or school personnel from home to school and from school to home. They're exempt. Government drivers. You are directly employed by a federal, state, or local government. Does not apply to government contractors. Occasional transport of personal property. The transportation is not for comp if the transportation is not for compensation or the benefit of a commercial enterprise. So, Say like me, I'm leasing a truck or say I even own my truck and I'm just home and maybe I want to take my truck to a truck show and I drive it there. I can do off duty driving so I don't have to really worry about logging it because I'm doing it on my personal time. You know, I'm not I'm not delivering no loads for any compensation. I'm not working. I'm just using my truck for personal use. So that's when you're exempt. Agriculture operation. Transporting agricultural commodities or farm supplies for agricultural purposes within a 150 mile air mile radius and during the state planting and harvesting season or operating a covered farm vehicle as defined in 390.5. So I guess like um those those big like agriculture machine uh, trucks that you see, they don't have to worry about logging. They're exempt. Utility service vehicles. Operating a utility service vehicle as defined in 395.2. So I don't know what utility service. Probably the ones that are like responsible for um, electrical lines or things like that. Fire trucks and rescue vehicles involved in emergency and related operations. Okay, 9 to 15 passenger vehicle. It, you are exempt if there is no direct compensation to the motor car for trans transportation services provided. Off-road motorized construction equipment, not including mobile cranes. Operated at construction sites or when operated on a public road, open to unrestricted public travel and the equipment is not used in furtherance of a transportation purpose. Propane delivery. Propane will be used as winter heating fuel and there is an immediate need to prevent entry, death, or property damage. Pipeline emergencies. There is an immediate need to prevent age, uh, injury, death, or property damage. Pipeline welding trucks. Operating a pipeline welding truck as defined in 390.338. Railroad signal employees. If you are engaged in installing, repairing, or maintaining signal systems while employed by a railroad carrier or contractor, subcontractor of, regulated by the Federal Railroad Administration. Transportation. Oh, wow. Transportation of human corpse or sick injured persons exempt at all times. Wow. They um what's that movie? Uh the one with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Oh, bad boys. So I guess the guys that drive the trucks to transport um, you know, dead corpse, you know, dead bodies, they don't have to worry about logging. I didn't know that. I just learned something today. Is there an exception? Um let me see i'm 30 minutes in all right i'm gonna i'm gonna stop here i'm gonna save that one for the next video but i finally got started guys um you know obviously when you learning something that's you know straight from the book or you know kind of like a not to say that it's a class setting but i'm trying to teach something you know facts i hope it's not too boring but i mean if you really want to know this stuff you're gonna sit and watch the whole video so you can try to you know learn what you need to learn so if you like like 
If you don't like, I don't you know what. I was about to cuss. I'm not going to do it. If you don't like, so what? So at the end of the day, let's love each other, not judge each other. Time is of the essence. Let's make better time of it. I'm still waiting for these people to come fix this freaking flat tire. So um, I love every one of y'all. Thanks to all my new subscribers. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. All right, I'll be getting back to y'all. Oh, yeah. I'm getting so, so bombarded with comments, and I really appreciate the comments. And it's not that I don't want to respond to them, but I'm missing some of the comments because the more subscribers you get, the more um, harder it is to keep up with every single comment. So when I get time to sit down and respond, I will. But I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm just merely trying to make the time to uh, respond and trying to make sure that I keep up with everybody. Because, you know, when your subscriber count goes up, I mean, it you can miss a whole lot of comments. So I'm going to try my best to to really look and uh, respond to all the comments that I'm able to get to. But don't think I'm ignoring you. I'm trying to reach everybody. And I hope everybody's having a lovely day. And Happy New Year's to everybody. So stay warm out there. Deuces.